Okay, Nation Nation, Harry here on a Friday. So I'm kind of in casual mode. Shout out to my friends at Spice Works down in Austin, Texas. We do good stuff together, but that's not why we're here. We're here to play Where in the World is Dave Sobel? <laughs> so Dave, good to see you again. Been, uh, been, been a while. It has been a while. And, and where in the world? Well, I'm at home like everybody else. Uh, although, <laughs> although I always say with a laugh, like uh, I had chosen to be at home prior to this uh, yeah I'm a, I'm a work from home guy anyway from the past sort of 10 years or so but i you know i when i left solar winds one of my things was is i'm gonna get off the road a little bit and i'm gonna do yeah. a little i'm gonna go in a new direction so for me uh the work from home thing yeah that's that was already the plan <laughs> So let's 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 talk about the past and then look to the future. So uh, the, the, some of my audience may may not know Dave Sobel. I certainly have known you twenty years. So so what's your story? Let's yeah, roll back. So, so you know, I, I always I always like to start like the, the you know the the professional version of the career starts. Look, when I graduated, I, I have a degree in computer science. I'm an actual engineering type by background. I'm just lucky to have the gift of gab too. So that makes me a better salesperson. Yeah. Um, my, I, I ran an MSP for a decade. A lot of people know me for, from that time frame. I was, uh, you know, I ran an MSP. I was heavily involved with peer groups. I was, yep. uh, I I was an MVP for, my, for virtualization. I was heavily involved with CompTIA, doing all kinds of community stuff. So I was a big community guy on the MSP side for, for a decade. Uh, had the chance to sell those bus that business, sold that in the end of 2011. And then in 2012, I was with Level Platforms, an RMM provider, which, yep. you know, so we grew that community up, uh, sold that to ABG. Of course, Rob Ray goes to, to Datto. I, I went to GFI. Um, and during that time, you know, I helped grow GFI to GFI became logic. Now, and of course we sold that business to solar winds. Okay. Uh, then that became solar winds MSP. And I did another three years on the solar wind side, particularly because I'd never been at a company through the IPO process. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm a, I'm all about learning. Like the part of the reason why I, I did an MSP and I learned and I was involved in the community for learning and I grew the community for learning. And then I wanted to understand what it was like to be a vendor. What are the dynamics of that? And I wanted to get to a big vendor. And what's the yeah. best way to do that? Ride the rocket ship up. <laughs> yeah. So, so I did, I was at SolarWinds a year post IPO. And then I left, you know, last year, uh, just, you know, around this time. So about a year ago, I left SolarWinds. Okay. And because, okay. because it was, yeah, six years from rocket ship startup all the way through sale, IPO, post, year of post IPO. That was, yep. that was a great time to say, I've bookended this. I learned yeah. a lot here. Now, what do I do with it? And that was the, you know, and, and I always smile and go like, you know, there's lots of people that run around and say they want to be a channel consultant or they, but, but I said, no, nah, instead, I want to actually look at the editorial voice side of things. I want to, I kind of want to shake my fist at the cloud a little, but, but more importantly, the be an editorial voice thinking about, technology services companies and providing some independent analysis where that would be what I did. So, so I said, I'm going to work on that problem. And here I am a year later, run it, you know, do a daily podcast, which includes yeah, you know, the business of tech. Yeah. Yep. It's, daily <laughs> yep. it's on Spotify. We're on, I'm on Apple, Spotify, Google, like I'm on all the platforms. Um, and you know, it's a daily five minute show where I also do weekend bonus episodes with editorial content. And I like to ask the question all the time of why do we care? It's, you can get news anywhere. I'm pulling stories and saying, this is one I think is important. And the why do we care segment is a perspective on what I think is going on with this, where, how it fits into a larger picture, where it fits in from an, either an opportunity perspective or a regulation perspective or a equity perspective. There's some, I talk some security, but not just another like, hey, here's a product. It's a like, let's look at the trend of this, how we see the market moving and try and give some insights into the, into the direction and more importantly, spark conversations. I don't, well, I don't need to be right. I just need to start a conversation. <laughs> yeah, so a couple, couple of thoughts as uh, is, is I'm listening to kind of what your mission is. Uh, number one, um, back in the, it's embarrassing almost, early mid nineties, I got involved with the uh, IAMCP, so the Microsoft Partner Association. Yeah. I, and I was carrying the bag. I worked at a regional accounting firm and carried the, the bag and was a consultant and so on. So it all made sense. And back then the mission was to be, to some extent, an ombudsman 
an independent entity to maybe keep Microsoft in check, right? And, and, and represent the partner. I've been very public. I, I still pay my dues, but I've been very public. I'm still in it. But they lost that. They, they used to be an independent ombudsman, and now they're more of a cheerleader for Microsoft, right? So we, we lost something I really liked about the IAMCP. And, and, and so I'm wondering if, is part of, you know, I understand you're an analyst and, 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 and that, but are, are you also trying to be that independent ombudsman and kind absolutely. of represent us? Okay. <laughs> absolutely. Because, because I look around and I say, you know, you can find, uh, you can find some great journalists, i.e. people reporting facts. Yeah. Uh, oh, so, yeah. Which, which is a totally valuable piece. Uh, there's, a, there's some really great work going on there. You can find some people that are I, helping. Dude, people. I read them. That's how yeah, I exactly. stay current. <laughs> right. There's, there's people that are doing, bringing people together, like for collaboration and for networking and, and that kind of stuff. And that's also high value. Um, and, you know, and, and then you've got ones where, I mean, let, let's call it out because it has value that they're, a, they're, a lead, they're lead generation for everybody. They're connecting oh, yeah. vendors to partners and, and helping to sell product. Look, that, that keeps the world going around. Right, like yeah. we need we need that. But I looked at the space and I sort of said, "Where's the editorial? Like, where's the person who's sort of pointing at things and going, is that the way we want it to be? Have we all agreed? Like, why? <laughs> and and let's ask some hard questions because you look at our space and we've got there's we're growing up, right? So a, a maturing and mature maturing <laughs> industry. There are issues to take on here. We're being looked at by regulators. You know, I covered some of the laws out in Louis in Louisiana that, okay. that we're, we're being looked at by regulators. We're be we have a flood of money coming into this space. There's all this private equity money coming in. Let's talk about it. Is it yeah. driving the behavior we all want? There's some rich people making a ton of money, but is it helping the industry? Is it helping the small provider? I like I looked at I want to look at the lobbying stuff. Um, you know, I want to dig, dig into the way. Uh, businesses are being lobbied. I've started looking into diversity and having, let, let's have, we're, we as a country are having some hard questions. We need to start asking ourselves, the industry about this. I look at it from a business angle. Diversity is important because I want to serve as many customers as possible. I need to understand all the customers. Like yeah. these are, que these are, and these are hard questions. They really are. And they don't always generate a lead. Right, which is often time what everyone wants. I know. I know. But I, I, I've been guilty of that myself with SMB Nation. But go yeah. on. <laughs> but, but but dude, I, I mean, I I need a paycheck. Okay. Well, but, but we all do. <laughs> but I I firmly believe that that these are the questions we have to ask to create a healthy industry where we can all make money. Yeah. Like, like the market has to be healthy. It has to be vibrant. Like some of the things I'm talking about are real actual threats. Like if, if we don't get involved with regulation, it will happen to us. And yeah. that may not be, that may not be, I want us to be involved in the solution. I think like talking about diversity, first off, it's the right thing to do. It's important. I want to live in a just society. By the way, living in a just society, really good for the economics. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like they're aligned. Uh, the private equity side of things. Like I don't want a bunch of, you know, Wall Street bankers coming in and stifling innovation just so they can, they can make money. Like yeah. that's not helping the health of the small business owner that we serve or the small businesses that are solution providers. We've got to, and, and you're fighting a different kind of battle in that front. Like, you know, we've been, we've been doing this for a while, right? Harry, you and I, we talk about being involved in this. Oh, yeah. Lots of founder led companies in the early days, R lots of small companies dealing with small companies. Now you've got a lot of, lots of bigger companies who are leveraging their position not necessarily to keep everything all in alignment on need. We've got to ask some hard questions. Yeah. No, this is, uh, this is good. So maybe a couple closing thoughts would be, um, first of all, I, I do look 
to you, uh, and and I do follow. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> and, you. And I, 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 yeah, I mean, I, I can. I'm not supposed to, but I can play this on my bicycle when I'm out riding with the Bluetooth headset, right? And uh, you're not supposed to do that when you're biking, but you can. Um, oh, I, I, and I do the same thing. I listen to podcasts when I bike. I freely admit it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but the point is, uh, I, I, I want to kind of end on this note. We we checked off on some of the the core things that were on my mind, but the the final one. Dave is part of the maturity and and just one of my peeves is you know there's there's a couple different trade groups in our uh, space um, and I would go to the annual conference or or get their communication and the, the last five years they'd say how great things are and we're expanding faster than the universe and and I get it you know trade associations have to they 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 do lobbying functions they do promotion, they, they typically, a chamber of commerce by its very nature has to be positive, right? Sure, <laughs> that's right, that's yeah. what they do, <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, and, and I get that, but Dave, I've had days where I've said, what planet are you on? I mean, I'm watching Bainbridge Technology Services close the door because the distributor would no longer give them HP ink cartridges down on Main Street, right? They took that privilege away from my, my good friends, um, he closed the doors. I mean, the printer ink pay, literally paid the rent. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and Dave, I'm, I'm, I'm like, there's this disconnect sometimes. So I'm looking to you to call that out. <laughs> well, I, and, and, I, and I, that's the, those are the conversations we need to have. Um, yeah. I am super data driven. Like I'll, I'll tell you, you know, we're, we're recording this right around September, right? And look, the economy is a weird thing right now. It's hard to, to analyze, right? And so I, I spent a ton of time like tracking solution provider performance, trying to understand both how, we're, how we've done and how we're doing. The, the one I keep pointing to right now is, is I, I read all of these surveys where solution providers are super optimistic about a Q4 recovery. And so I look at I look, and, and all the trade, you're exactly right, all the trade, oh, it's going to be Q4 recovery. What data are you people looking at? Because, know. you know, because I mean, I'm going to say it because like, I'm looking at the market data and it, none of it tells me that none of us, none of it tells me that, that you know, that the, the that unemployment is, re is re getting that much better, that much faster, or that yeah. portions of the economy have opened up in a way that have truly freed up all of that kind of stuff. And by the way, people, you know, I rant for a moment ago, this is a different kind of disruption. It's not like the previous recessions where credit was a problem. The banking portion of our, of, our, of our economy is not the problem. Credit right. is available. It's that there's not enough money flowing through services, i.e. anything where we're requiring face-to-face -face contact. Yeah. Those industries are way down. Let's just call it out. I don't see any data saying Q4 recovery. Now, why do I rant? Because I want to keep everybody in business. When yeah. you talk about like that small provider, I think about that person and I say, you need to be forewarned that there are choppy waters ahead and let's call this out and not fall into, you know, what I sort of laugh and go optimism porn, where like we want to look at, you know, we want to think every, let, let's be realistic. Let's analyze our situation and understand what we can do to thrive in actual circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's the, that's the mission. And so we have to ask hard questions to get there. So I'll tell you, here, here's what I'm going to do, Dave. Uh, we'll call it good for today. So I'm going to circle back to you next quarter, and, and we're going to talk about uh, maybe about mid-quarter. We're going to talk about two things, if you don't mind. One is, what are you seeing with the economic data? Because we will be into Q4, and yep. you know, you're, you're going to have the Thursday labor report, so to speak. Right? Uh, absolutely. So, um, want to talk about that. And then also, if you could be thinking about, this will be post-election, and, and I think that's also something we need to call out. You know, we all played with kids' gloves back in 16. Oh, you know, oh, man, I can't, you know. <laughs> but but I, I, we, we, we need to have some mature conversations about that dynamic, my friend. Well, we do. Well, we do, we do. Well, look, we live in the world. The world goes around based on you know, the, this, the policy decisions that happen. Uh, we are active participants in that. You know, like we, I, and I look at it as an analyst and say, we can talk about what those decisions mean. And then you're exactly right on the other side, we'll have new data that oh, tells yeah. us what we can talk about on the other side. So I, I'm, I'm totally up, Harry. We'll do well, it. Well, you're, you're the right guy because you're based out of the Washington, D.C. area. So, hey, Dave, I got to run. You got to run. You're doing a daily show. 
And uh, thanks for your time, my friend. Thanks for having me.